All right. Those of you coming in, grab a seat. We are about ready to get things started for the afternoon of the design and architecture track here at API Days. Everyone enjoy lunch? Yeah? Okay, so the post-lunch audience, you have a job. Don't look tired, right? <laughs> All right, cool. No yawning. I know it's tough after eating lunch, but we got a great talk coming up here uh, from Alex uh, from Rapid API is going to talk about APIs on the rise. Take it away. Wonderful. So good to be here with all of you. Uh, it's my first time in Paris, actually, so thank you to everyone I've met for the warm hospitality. It's been a great time being here. So I'm going to be talking about APIs and your enterprise API strategy and why it's important. Generally, I'll go through uh, the proliferation of APIs uh, and how that informs the API strategy and the need to develop one, the stages at which an API can be at, so private, partner, public, or third-party API, and the challenges that come up with all of those different types of APIs. Finally, I'll go into that API strategy that you need to begin developing and five critical components when addressing that API strategy. So a little bit about myself. My name is Alex Walling. I am head of developer relations at Rapid API. Uh, I've been programming and building applications for a little over 10 years now. Uh, throughout my college career, I helped found a college hackathon called HackCU back in the United States, and that's actually where I initially got interested in APIs and helping educate and empower developers to be as successful as possible. You can reach out to me at alex at rapidapi.com or Alex Walling on most social media. A little bit about Rapid API before I dive into my talk. So Rapid API is the world's largest API marketplace. We currently have over a million developers on the platform who are consuming 10,000 public APIs and making billions of requests to our services each and every month. We were founded in 2015 uh, and are now based in San Francisco and Tel Aviv. And we have some incredible investors backing us to help get us to where we are now, as well as take us to the future of Rapid API. So why do you need an API strategy? Well, obviously, APIs are proliferating, and that's why we're all here. We know the power of them. And they have huge potential. They're really powerful and help empower your developers to be as successful as possible. But with all of that comes a lot of challenges. So we need to develop an API strategy. And the strategy has to encompass the entire life cycle of APIs from private to public and everything in between. So let's talk a little bit about APIs. APIs are obviously becoming hugely popular. Otherwise, you wouldn't be spending three days here at a conference in Paris. Uh, so we all know just how powerful APIs are becoming. Uh, and we've already seen multiple unicorns come out of the API economy. So let's take a look at where APIs are currently being used in the enterprise. Here's an example organization who has multiple internal APIs that are being used. But this is really quite a simplistic view as far as what your APIs actually look like. So you've built all of these great internal APIs, but you also have partners. You have third-party clients you have existing business relationships with, and maybe you start exposing certain APIs to those partners. And then you also have developers, hobbyists, uh, small team developers who maybe you don't have an existing relationship with, but they have another subset of APIs that they want to start utilizing. And then you also have all of your third-party APIs as well. Uh, you have Twilio for SMS, SendGrid for email, and your developers are utilizing these APIs internally, but the thir they're third-party APIs. So let's break down all of these different APIs. Private APIs, again, these are APIs that are built internally by your developers to empower your other software applications. These are not exposed externally. Partner APIs, these are the APIs that you begin to expose to certain third-party clients who you have an existing relationship with. Public APIs, who are the APIs that you want to drive innovation with. You start exposing it to third-party developers. And then this is an, a, a continuous process. This is always changing and growing. As you saw on the last slide, maybe certain internal APIs eventually become those client-based APIs. And then finally, you have these third-party APIs used to build up the basic infrastructure and drive innovation of your applications. 
So the first API we're going to take a look at is these private APIs, and they're becoming way more popular. From a survey in 2015, we found that 68% of all organizations are using or investigating microservices and thus utilizing APIs. And this survey is from 2015, so we're sure that it's become even more popular today. And with this growth in private APIs, you have more and more APIs coming up internally. Over 50% of organizations, according to a survey in 2018, have more than 300 internal APIs. That's a ton of APIs for your organization to keep track of and manage. And as we see all of these APIs, we see multiple teams building their own APIs. And if you don't have a strategy to be able to share all of these APIs, then you can get code duplication and API duplication. In this example here, three different teams had all created a loan offer API because they had no idea it already existed from another team. And to make this even worse, these APIs are being deployed in a, a variety of different deployment environments. Maybe it's in a data center, a private cloud, or, on, or a public cloud. And so that just adds another layer of complexity to all of these APIs that are being used. The next type of API we'll look at is these partnerships APIs. These really drive your, can drive your business. It can be another revenue stream, another chance for innovation to drive your company further. And this is uh, what we look at when we look at public APIs. And these APIs are, public APIs are becoming more and more popular as well. When we look at programmable web, there's almost 30,000 public APIs currently available across the internet. And these third-party APIs really help drive your developer's innovation. You're able to develop the applications faster because you don't have to reduplicate that code. You have better service because they're the experts in that exact API, so you don't have to deal with learning everything you need to know about email servers or SMS and phone carriers or go into the bank to be able to start doing credit card processing. They can be the experts in that space and you start utilizing that functionality. It's also cost effective because more and more companies use the same functionality, so you get the benefits of scale and lower cost. And it opens up new possibilities to be able to put different APIs together and create new and interesting use cases. But integrating all of these different APIs can be quite difficult. Each one might have a different format, a different connection process. You'll have a different account for each API, a different API key, a different billing dashboard, different authentication methods. So it's really quite a complex methodology for your developers to get up and running. And all of these third parties obviously introduce a certain amount of risk as well. If your API goes down, your app also goes down. If the API is breached, your data is breached. If the API is slow, then your app is also slow. If your API is not compliant, then your app is also not compliant. And it's not just us who thinks that there's a real need to address the, all of these different challenges. We're seeing researchers are seeing this as a really prominent problem within organizations as well. So what are the goals for your API strategy? Well, you want to set up uh, a methodology to expose uh, APIs within an organization for all of those private APIs to be able to share and collaborate and reuse all of those APIs better. You want to be able to enable business partnerships by easily uh, sharing out partner APIs through a seamless integration process. You want to unlock innovation by opening those APIs up to third-party developers. And then finally, you want to govern and monitor all of the third-party APIs your company is using internally. And so this gets me to the five key components in your API strategy that we think you need to think about. Um, and there's a lot that goes into this, and I'll break down each one of these. So the first one we're going to look at is executive support. Obviously, developer adoption is critical in developing your API strategy, integrating them into your application, but re what really drives that adoption is executive support. You need to get the buy-in from the executives. And why do you need this? Because it helps inform the budgeting for a team, being able to buy additional tooling for all of your APIs. You can allocate time to be able to build and use these APIs. It helps incentivize when APIs are being used well, 
they're able to reward and highlight the, the fact that they're being used well and help drive that culture change because adopting a methodology of an API management solution will be a culture change. And a few examples of these. A small little startup up in Seattle, uh, Microsoft. And when we really look at Microsoft, it's more a combination of multiple smaller billion dollar companies. And so how are, how are all of these smaller individual companies within Microsoft able to collaborate and be as successful as they are? Well, it's through APIs, through being able to share the, sim the similar use cases and functionality with other team members on other teams. Maybe it's Xbox Office or Azure to Office. You're able to share and collaborate and really make this, com this larger company into uh, something that is greater than the sum of all its parts. Another company up in Seattle, Amazon. Uh, this is an internal email that went out to all Amazon employees. It's a pretty famous one where uh, he highlights the need for every single team to start utilizing and exposing data and functionality through services, through APIs. And then it goes more deeply into how exactly are they going to go about doing that. And the final, one, final point in this email is, anyone who doesn't do this will be fired. Uh, I'm not saying you should fire anyone who's not utilizing APIs or not adopting your API strategy, but this just really shows how important it is to these successful executives in developing their API strategy. And when we really look at it, look, I'm not saying that utilizing APIs is the only reason for Amazon's success, but I think it's a contributing factor to the innovation and the speed at which they're able to, to launch new products and develop further into being a successful company. And it's not just CEO support. We have uh, heads of product and other executives who are adopting this um, API-first methodology and trying to drive adoption of APIs. This is a great video here by uh, Stephen from JP Morgan. I'm not going to play the video here, but I highly recommend checking it out afterwards. The next step in the process, step number two, is how do you organize this uh, API management methodology? Do you have a single team who is establishing horizontal API standards, or do you let each team within the organization define their own methodologies, tools, and standards? And so what questions do you need to answer while setting up this organization strategy? We need to figure out who is going to approve the APIs being used, whether that be partner APIs or third-party APIs, as well as who approves the APIs being published to those third-party clients or uh, to the public. You need to define a standard to how those APIs are created and the models and formats that they're being accessed through. And you also need to decide who's going to be approving buying of different API tools to be able to support the development process. And there's benefits to both approaches. With an individual team approach, you allow the team to have a real ownership for the tools they're using, the methodologies they're taking to building out their APIs, and they really have a sense of ownership over everything they're doing. With a horizontal, uh, across the entire organization approach, you have the ability to share those APIs more easily because they're a standardized model for connection, as well as you get uh, optimization in selecting a single tech stack for all of your APIs. The methodology we actually like to use, though, is a hybrid approach. So I have an API standard of excellence team who is defining what the API should look like, how they should be exposed, the documentation needed around each API, but then let the engineering teams d decide how they're building it, how they're deploying it, uh, and also one key thing here, have a central tool for sharing and discovering all of these APIs. That's part of that API standard of excellence. Because when we really look at this, the building, testing, and deploying phase for APIs, it doesn't matter so much what tools are being used in that subset of the development process. If you're using Node or Python or whatever it might be, as long as the API is exposed in a way that an end developer can consume it, they don't really mind what the API is built in. But the publishing and sharing, that's where you really need a standard, where you need to be able to have a consistent ex experience across all teams. Because 
uh, as you're using multiple APIs from multiple teams, you want it to look the same. You want it to be easier each and every time that you utilize another API. And so that brings us to the, this API platforming. And so when we think about developing an API strategy, we really think you need an API hub to be able to manage all of your APIs. Because when you look at this, you might have an API gateway, that's your main API gateway, but then maybe through acquisitions or through uh, miscommunication, you start to develop multiple API gateways within your organization. And then again, some are deployed in a data center, some are deployed in a private cloud, and some are deployed pu publicly. You don't have a standard point of connection for all of these different types of APIs. And that variance is increasing more and more. These are the two graphs I highlighted earlier as far as uh, companies have over 300 APIs internally and they're being deployed all over the place. And so with an API hub, it really enables all of those three different types of APIs that we spoke about earlier. So you're able to share, uh, publish APIs and control API access for all of your internal APIs for the creators. For the consumers, you're able to have a standardized discovery and connection process. And for the governance, you're able to, to see all of the APIs that are published, approve certain APIs, track that usage, make sure it's meeting your standard of excellence. And all of this can be exposed publicly as well if you wanted to switch that to a, a public model. And so with that API hub, you're able to layer that on top of all of these different API gateways to be able to manage and share and discover all of your APIs internally. And there's a few key capabilities that we think your API hub needs to have. You need to be able to publish APIs, obviously, but you have a multitude of different types of APIs. It needs to be able to support REST and SOAP and GraphQL. And obviously you want to be standardizing and going to the future of what uh, the API standard should be, but you still need to be able to support all of those legacy solutions. You need to be able to discover APIs because you need to reuse and uh, be able to utilize all of those APIs that are being built. You need to test and evaluate to make sure that it's a good API for your use case. You need to instantly be able to provision that API, get an API key, and start using it right away to improve that developer experience. You need to be able to track these APIs to make sure they're running as expected, the uptime is what you expect it to be, and you, you can better monitor that API usage. And then we also see a need for discussion and support, especially when you have distributed teams, being able to leave a message right in the API Hub platform, you're able to share those APIs and collaborate more easily with the owner of that API to know exactly how it's used. And this is a full cycle. Uh, you need something that supports all of these different capabilities. On top of an API Hub, there's a lot of uh, tools that come along with that API hub that you might need to think about. Uh, when we think about the API hub, it only really takes care of the right-hand side of that consumer, uh, consumer experience and only the top four uh, for that publishing experience. But you need to be able to test, deploy, mock, design all of these APIs as well. You need tooling to be able to support the full life cycle of a developer's experience of creating, testing, publishing, consuming, uh, monitoring, all of those APIs. And so we have a few recommendations for all of these different tools. For API design, there's tons of great tools out there. Postman to be able to t test it and Swagger to be able to standardize um, the documentation and share that uh, with other teams. For testing and monitoring, again, there's lots of great companies out there, uh, RunScope and API Fortress, to be able to monitor this API usage and ensure it's uh, working as expected, because that's re really important for the, the uptime of your application. For synthetic data, to be able to test your APIs, maybe you have sensitive data that you don't want to be testing on, there's a lot of great tools out there to be able to create mock data and use those APIs from a testing standpoint. And then we also look at middleware for older solutions. And so this enables you to turn maybe a SOAP API into a REST API or a REST API into a GraphQL API. And so this is another piece in helping drive that innovation and really making sure your applications are future-proof. 
And the last one that I'm personally really excited about is education and awareness. Education and awareness is one of the most critical pieces of this entire uh, strategy because if you create the tooling, if you create the API hub, but developers don't know it exists, how to use it, or how to be successful with it, then they're not going to use it. They're not going to want to utilize this new platform that you've spent time, money, and resources getting up and running. And so when we think about education and awareness, there's a lot of really great things that we're able to do. Maybe it's an API newsletter to make the developers aware of which APIs have been released in the last week or month. Maybe it's uh, creating events or workshops around educating the developers on how to use both the APIs, but also the API hub solution that you've created. And just really celebrating those wins. When APIs are being utilized in the proper ways, that helps drive the culture adoption of all of these APIs. And then for education, it's really important to standardize your APIs, make them look similar, and the, the different ID types are consistent across all of the APIs. You can buy online courses to be able to help educate your developers on the latest and greatest standards for developing these APIs. API development is a, a, an extremely uh, necessary skill that all developers should know how to do. And so it's the organization's responsibility to be educating and making sure that they're up to date in all of the latest and greatest uh, tools and technologies. So that's the five key components that we look at when we think about developing the API strategy within your organization. I'll leave this up for a few minutes, um, and then I'm going to give a few minutes for questions. All right. Big round of applause for Alex. Cool, so we have about four minutes for Q&A. So any questions from the audience? Anybody? Awesome, it made sense to everyone. <laughs> All right, well, I think, I think that's, uh, that's it. An another round of applause for Alex. <laughs> and uh, coming up next, we got a uh, journey from monolith to microservices for Marco. So stick around if that's interesting to you.